All right, Estes Cherokee E. Let's open the package and see what's inside. Looks like we have a couple tubes and a nose cone. Little package with the tube coupler and some centering rings for the motor mount. What I'm doing here is I'm test fitting all the parts together. I want to see if any of them need to be shimmed up or sanded down. Looks like I needed to sand down one of the centering rings here to get it to fit onto the motor tube better. Okay, what I did just there is I drew an arrow on the motor tube to show the direction that I wanted to install it in the rocket. One of the centering rings was much looser than the other one, and I wanted to insert that into the rocket first, or on the uh, forward end there, I guess you would say, to make it easier to glue it in. Okay, now I'm going to glue the centering rings onto the motor tube. Nothing too fancy here, I just put a bead of glue around the tube and slide the ring on over it. I wipe off any excess glue to make sure that it doesn't drip everywhere when I set it aside to let it dry. And while that glue dries I decide to uh, go ahead and cut out the fins. Uh, some of the fins are easier to cut out than others but uh, the ones uh, that aren't easy to cut out you just uh, gotta keep scoring with your hobby knife till they can be punched out successfully. I don't recommend trying to force this because if you do you can uh, get a really really rough edge or even break part of your fin if you're not careful. Here I'm putting some fillets uh, at the intersection between the centering ring and the motor tube. So now I brought out a cutting board here to kind of helped me out because I'm having to cut through uh, quite a bit of the wood here. Now I'm going to take some 200 grit sandpaper and I'm going to sand the root edge of the fin. That's the fin that, or the edge of the fin that's going to be glued on to the body tube. Now I do kind of a test fit here where I hold the fin up to the body tube and see if I see any light shining through. It's really critical that the whole face of that uh, root edge makes contact with the body tube so you get the strongest joint that you can. So here I'm applying a layer of glue to the root edge of each fin and what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that dry. The reason for this is that we want the glue to fill in uh, all the different nooks and crannies of the fin with this glue so that when we apply the glue that's actually going to adhere the fin to the tube it doesn't just get soaked into the fin but it can be used for actually bonding the fin to the tube. So this is a good time to go ahead and cut out the fin alignment guide. What this does is, uh, or what you do is you wrap this around the tube and each vertical line uh, represents the place where you want to mount a fin. There's also a line for the launch lug as well 
And so this way uh, you make sure that your fins are spaced evenly around your body tube. Note that I'm using painter's tape here because you do have to actually temporarily tape the fin alignment guide to the body tube and you want to be able to get the tape off without ripping off part of your body tube and painter's tape is a good choice for that. Now I'm going to draw the lines on the tube for mounting the fins. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm connecting the dots that I put on the tube with the fin alignment guide together, making just some nice straight lines that are nice and dark uh, that I can see for mounting the fins onto the tube. And I'm drawing one line on here that is longer than the lines for the fins, and that's for the launch lug because it's placed a little bit higher up on the tube. And here it looks like I'm erasing a line. I must have messed up on the first try. Here I'm putting a layer of glue on the tube that I'm going to let dry just like I did on the fins for the same reason. Okay, now I'm putting on the glue that I'm actually going to use to glue the fin to the tube. One thing to note here is that you need to let the glue partially dry on the tube before mounting the fin because it needs to be nice and sticky when you mount the fin onto the tube or else the fin is not going to stick to the tube. And you're not going to be able to adjust it to make it align with the other fins like you need to if you don't get, get the stickiness right. Or in other words, you need to let it partially dry the right amount. And these are really big fins for this rocket, so I did a lot of adjusting them after I glued them onto the tube to try to make sure they were really lined up straight. And then added a little extra glue just to uh, make sure that the fin dried at the right angle that I wanted it at. Now I'm putting some glue in the back of the rocket. This is for gluing in the motor mount tube. And I made sure that I glued it in in the right direction. By that I mean in accordance with the arrow that I drew on the motor tube earlier. Here I'm adding some fillets for strength. I highly recommend using the technique I'm using here where you pour the glue on and then wipe off the excess with your finger. What I'm doing here is I'm coating the back of the motor tube with glue. This is because when we prep the rocket for flight, we're going to wrap some tape around that motor tube and we want to have a coating between the cardboard tube itself and the tape. 
This here is the epoxy I'm using to glue the launch lug onto the tube. Now it's important to look at the launch lug from a few different angles to make sure that it's on straight. Sometimes your eyes can kind of play tricks on you. Now I have the 200 grit sandpaper back out to sand off the other edges of the fins. I should have done this before gluing the fins on the rocket by the way. Here I'm just putting a coating of glue around the back of the rocket. This section is going to be potentially subject to a lot of heat, so I want to make sure that the cardboard is uh, coated with the protective layer from that heat. Now I have the epoxy back out to make some fillets for the launch lug. Here I'm not going to use my finger to try to smooth it out and wipe off the excess because you don't want to put your fingers in epoxy. So I only made one fillet, or I only did a fillet on one side of the launch lug because I felt that was enough to make it strong enough. Now I'm getting the rocket ready to paint. I'm going to put tape around the surfaces that don't need to get paint on them. I'm using painter's tape here. I like to scuff up the nose cone a little bit with my 200 grit sandpaper to make the paint stick better. And here's the primer I'm starting off with. So I didn't record the actual spray painting of the primer on the rocket. I wasn't real pleased with how it turned out. The fins were very rough. Um, I, I did go ahead and paint the nose cone blue. And that turned out well. But uh, the fins, there's the blue paint I used, the fins needed some more work. So I got some additional primer and the white paint for the rocket that you see there. My technique that I used was just to really spray a whole lot of primer on the fins. Now the right way to do this is to get some sort of sanding sealer and then and put it on, then sand, then put more sanding sealer on, then sand again. But uh, for me, it's e easier to just spray a whole lot of paint on there. Okay, there's the rocket. The fin's got a ton of white paint on them now, so they're satisfactory. Here I'm cutting out the shock cord mount. 
Sometimes if you kind of just run your finger along the tube there, it removes some of the burrs from painting and makes the rocket smoother. Okay, so now I'm getting started with cutting out the decals. This is unquestionably the most difficult part of building this rocket. I was happy to see that these are water slide decals, which in my opinion are just far superior to actual stickers because they really adhere to the rocket much better and they, they look much better on the rocket um, than the regular sticker type decals do. I like to put a little Elmer's glue in the water that I use for the decals. I think it makes them stick a little bit better to the rocket. Now putting on these decals does require a lot of patience, but if you put in the time and effort, they really do look good on the rocket uh, when it's all done. So for this decal, you want to make sure that you cut the edges really straight with your scissors. And when you mount it onto the rocket, try to make sure that the edge is lined up with the launch lug side of the rocket because normally where the launch lug is isn't where you put a lot of your other decals. And it's not the side of the rocket that you're trying to show off. And if there is some sort of a discrepancy with the alignment of the decal, it's going to show up where the edges meet. And so if it doesn't look good, make that be on the side of the rocket that you're not trying to show off. 
Here I'm gluing the shock cord mount into the tube coupler. and punching out the eye hole in the nose cone so we can tie the shock cord to it. Now the parachute that comes with this rocket, in my opinion, is way too big. So what I did was replace it with a smaller parachute from another rocket that I had. So since I'm going to be gluing the nose cone into the payload tube of the rocket, I'm going ahead and tying some rope to it because I want it to be strong and last forever and if it's glued in there it's going to be very difficult for me to replace it. So I tied some really strong rope in here that should last the life of the rocket. Okay, now I'm going to glue in the tube coupler into the body tube. And a couple points here is you want to make sure you don't use too much glue because you don't want it to drip down the inside of the rocket, uh, potentially get into the motor tube. And the other point here is that you need to make sure that the tube coupler is parallel with the body tube because if it's a little bit crooked, then your rocket will not be straight. It'll have a bend in it, and that could be a really serious problem that is very difficult to fix. So we really want to avoid that here. Okay, I got the electrical tape out here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tie together the uh, loose ends of the rope here because although it's unlikely being way up in the payload section of the rocket, you don't want the shroud lines of the parachute to get tangled up in the excess rope on your shock cord because if that happens, your parachute will not open. All right, here I'm adding in an additional length of shock cord. This additional length I got from another rocket, but you can get uh, some thin elastic from Walmart in the sewing section. Uh, it'll serve the same purpose. The reason for the long shock cord is that uh, when the ejection charge goes off, the two pieces are going to separate or try to separate uh, pretty far, and a longer shock cord will result in just less stress on the rocket itself and a lesser likelihood of the payload and the body tube to kind of snap back together and make contact with each other and damage the rocket. 
Now I'm going to glue the nose cone to the payload section. I like to use cement for plastic models for this. Here I'm adding a little more glue to the shock cord mount just for reinforcement. Make sure it's as strong as possible. Now I'm going to go ahead and prepare the rocket for flight. What I've done is I've scored this electrical tape about halfway around the width of the tape and I'm wrapping it around the back of the motor. I want to wrap enough tape such that the outside diameter of the tape on the motor is roughly equal to the outside diameter of the motor tube itself which will allow me to put another wrap of tape that goes around both the motor and the motor mount tube that uh, causes them to stay together when the rocket flies. That piece of tape there was just to make the motor a little bit more snug in the body tube. So I wanted to cut back on the friction between the body tube coupler and the payload section. So I got my 200 grit sandpaper back out just to do a little bit of sanding to make the parts slide back and forth a little bit easier. Now I'm going to tape the motor uh, to the motor tube. I got some blue electrical tape here so it matches the rocket. Okay, so I took the parachute back out of the rocket, and that is so I can douse it with this talcum powder. And since the parachute is a new parachute that hasn't been used before, it is a little bit stiff. Um, it wants to stay in its folded up position. 
And so what we need to do here is kind of break it in. And when you add the talcum powder to it, what it does is it acts as a lubricant between the plastic and keeps the plastic from sticking together as you're trying to crumple it up and uh, make it in it, or just kind of to break it in. It, it really helps with that. And I want to emphasize here that this is an extremely important step in preparing your rocket for flight. Uh, you do not put this talcum powder on the rocket or on the parachute and really try to break it in, and the chances of the parachute opening go down significantly. Okay, now watch very carefully how I roll up the parachute. Uh, there are multiple ways to roll up your parachute such that it will work. However, a lot of them are kind of tricky and difficult. And so, if you're new to flying rockets, I do not recommend rolling up your parachute any other way except for what you just saw there. Now, the only part of the preparation for flight that I did not show was the installation of blow-in cellulose insulation to act as the wadding that protects the parachute from the ejection charge. Now, if you're not sure how much insulation to put in the rocket, it's, it's almost best to fill up the entire bottom body tube of the rocket to, to make sure that you have enough. And it's a successful flight. The D-12-5 took the rocket nice and high and it's ready to get prepared for another flight.